Now, adjust the volume control so that the sound can be heard in all parts of the room. This is the Protect Your Assets podcast. You get the idea? Bring me a dream. It's on the internet. Make him the cutest that I've ever seen. Go on. Give him two lips. Like it's like no cheese I've ever tasted. And tell him that it's lost Here's the Sandman. Over Sandman. The countdown to Christmas is on. And you know what that means. Tax time is right around the corner. So before you start sipping on that eggnog and finish up your Christmas shopping, mm -hmm, I know you, there are a few things you can do to keep your taxes down, but you have to do it before the end of the year. Good morning. Welcome to Protect Your Assets. I'm David Hollander, your host. It's so great to be with you on this typical foggy bay morning day, but the sun's out there. I can see it coming. So for those of you just joining us for the first time, welcome. People around here, they've been calling me the Sandman for years, and that's because I help my listeners sleep well at night by answering their most troubled legal or financial questions every single week. And that's because I am a financial advisor and an attorney. So 2022 is just around the corner, and there are several smart money moves you should consider right now before the year is over. Because let's face it, everything is so slow right now. I just ordered some tires from Tire Rack, and I said, they'll be there Monday. Well, I just got an email this morning saying, sorry, due to the whatever, da-da-da-da. I'm not sure when you're going to get them. Well, I need them Wednesday, so what the heck? Right? So think about that, because if you want things done and you're relying on others like UPS or the mail or your friend or whatever, it takes a lot longer now, doesn't it? So that's what's coming. So you better get it in gear is all I'm trying to say. Don't wait till the last second, like maybe you do for your shopping. It's going to be too late because right now things are just taking too long so today we're going to be talking about some things you can do before the year is up, before it's too late, to pay less in taxes next year. It's all coming up next. Now, let's get started. Yes, this was an exciting week. The uh, S&P was off 0.3%. NASDAQ had a big drop and came back. It was off 0.7% for the week. And uh, the 10-year Treasury... Finished at 1.57% oil, still over $80 a barrel. So what happened this past week? This was this was an interesting week. We had the uh, coming out of the weekend, the stimulus bill. I'll talk about that in a minute. What does it mean for you and the markets? But, you know, it seemed like things were going to be going the right direction. And then the next thing, you know, Wednesday came around and boom, stocks had a big drop. And so most of the media, I get this all the time. I just heard on CNBC, da, da, da. I said, stop watching that stuff. I mean, I can just tell you from doing TV, you have a very limited amount of time to talk. And it's all about what you say, how you say it, and when you say it. Think about that. It's causing you reactions. So stop looking at that. Here's what they didn't tell you. I kept watching. Most of the financial media said that Wednesday's drop in stocks was the result of that hot consumer price index report. But that's not why the market dropped. The market dropped because yields, particularly on the 10-year treasury, rose so quickly in the afternoon right after that report. That's why. And as you know from listening to this show, because you're a student of the market like I am, when rates rise, who gets whacked first? Come on. Technology stocks. We've been talking about this for years. It's like a seesaw. When one goes up, the other goes down. It's just that simple. Don't try and fight it. Just the way it goes. So the... Consumer Price 
inflation report caused the dollar to basically surge. And it hit a 2021 high while the 10-year Treasury yield jumped big time. And the combination of that caused the 30-year Treasury auction to basically get out of control. <sighs> to understand what's going on, I'm going to try and make this simple for you. Because this is complicated stuff. This starts to move quickly, fast, and you're going, what's going on? Just to figure it out. Because you wonder, is this it? Is this the moment we need to get super defensive and sell some stuff? At least that's the way I'm thinking. So to understand what, extent, what sent the dollar higher, what sent the 10-year yield higher, you have to look at the Fed fund futures market. And here's what it said. Prior to Wednesday, the Fed fund futures had a June 22 rate hike at a 40% chance. When Wednesday's CPI report came out, immediately that index jumped to a 70% chance. So you went from a 40% to a 70% just like that. Well, that change <laughs> combined with the surge in inflation, and I'm going to talk about inflation in a minute, that sent the dollar higher. It was just that simple. And then you added to that the horrible, this was one of the worst 30-year treasury auctions I've seen in a very, very long time. And what I'm talking about there is when they issue 30-year treasuries to the public to buy, you usually see the gap at about one basis point. Now, just to give you an idea of what a basis point is, one basis point is 1% of 1%. So 0 0.01, like a penny, think about it like this, like a dollar. If you have a dollar, that's 100 basis points. If you have a penny, that's one point. So the difference between that is 99, right? That's right. Okay, well, usually you see one penny as the trading difference between the third year when it gets issued and then starts selling. Because there's so much interest in buying our debt because everyone loves us around the world because we pay more than everybody else. But because of everything I just said, get this, six times was the number. It was a six basis point gap. Now, you may not say, well, six cents is not a lot, but it is. If, you, if it's usually a cent and then all of a sudden it jumps to six cents and very little interest in buying our 30-year debt, well, guess what? That's bad. <laughs> and that's what happened. That was it. Period. End of story. So as I've been saying, the decline in yields the past couple of weeks, which caused tech to rally, quickly unwound. And that's what caused the markets to move. It was just that simple. So we got to keep focusing on inflation. Now, let me turn to that because you cannot ignore inflation. It's hot. And I'm seeing this in the producer price index report we saw this week and the consumer price index report. To give you an idea, the CPI, which is the consumer price index, came in at 6.2% year over year. It's usually around two. <laughs> yeah. So this is the highest level we've seen since 1990. 30 years. The PPI, again, the producer price index, this is amazing. This was 8.6%. And that's the highest we've seen since coming out of the Great Recession of 2008. So these sort of numbers in inflation, you have to start wondering, is this a transitory inflation, meaning it's going to unwind itself, fix itself in the next coming months? Or is it going to be stickier? Are we going to be stuck with this stuff longer, which is not good. What's driving inflation right now? It's the combination of super strong demand. I want tires by Wednesday. And there's no supply, folks. And if you want it, 
There's a gap. You see all those container ships sitting in the bay right now? Go look out there. I have never seen so many ships just sitting around. In fact, they're leaving, going all the way down to Central America, going through the Panama Canal, and then going to Florida and dumping there because they've been sitting with this stuff for three months. Yeah, I mean, it's just simple stuff, guys. So here's where you're going to see transitory inflation because that is going to unwind itself, I think, in the next six months. And I'm seeing that right now in the auto industry because as you look at the reports that came out this past couple of weeks from the auto industry, they're saying that supply is starting to improve. And, and as my friend pointed out, you can go buy a brand new truck and you can pay the same as a truck that's like two years old. So why would you buy a two-year-old truck? Yeah, exactly. Well, if you can get a new one, of course you're going to buy a new one. The stickier stuff, well, your housing. You want to build a house right now? Don't do it. That's dumb. You want to rent something new that you're going to live in or occupy as an office? Well, better get ready to pay more. Medical services, they're higher. School, all those poor kids. Parents who pay for that stuff. I can't wait. I got six more months and I'm done. And then you talk about salary increases. Well, yep, that's all happening. That's sticky stuff. That's going to keep the prices and inflation around for a little while. So where do you put your money when this stuff's going on? That's what you want to know. That's why you're listening to me this morning. What does the Sandman say about my money, my portfolio? What should I be doing right now? I get it. I've been saying the same thing, and I'm not changing my tune, so listen up. Rising inflation, rising rates, check, check. What do you want to own? Value, cyclicals, they outperform, plain and simple. Financials, banks, energies, industrials, they hold up. You could look at some consumer staples, utilities, and healthcare. Yep, they've lagged. And there may be some opportunity there. Just saying. How about the rest of the world? Yep, emerging markets, commodities still look pretty good. So I think that given the current situation we're in right now, you're going to see the S&P hold between 4460 and write it down 4683. Midpoint level 4572. Expect more volatility between now and the end of the year. But your support level is at 44.60. Now, the infrastructure bill passed. Hoo-ha, right? Everything's great. Market should have rallied. But it didn't. Why? Because it's only a peripheral positive. The size of the spending, $1 trillion, well, it's really $500 billion over 10 years. Yeah, it's going to help some things. But it's not a reason to run out and add infrastructure names to your portfolio. Hear what I just said? If you already owned them, good for you. Sit on it. But if you're going to go run out and buy them right now, I don't recommend it. Next week, important economic data coming will be retail sales and more inflation news, leading economic indicators. Now. How do you save money? Well, if you want to save over 50 grand next year in tax bills, you heard me right, and you want to stick around because I'm going to unveil some last minute smart money moves you need to be making right now before your UPS guy fails to show up. It always pays to listen to Protect Your Assets with David Hollander. That's me. We'll be right back. Now you can hear this show, Protect Your Assets, hands-free anytime on your smart speaker or Android device. Just say, hey, Google, ask Protect Your Assets to play the latest podcast. Learn more at libertygroupllc.com slash voice. Now back to Protect Your Assets with David Hollander, the Sandman. To the sand, sand tree, the dirty land. Welcome back. I'm David Hollander, also known as the Sandman, and you're listening to Protect Your Assets this morning. For those of you just joining us, 
2022 is just around the corner and there's so little time to make smart money moves before the year is over to save you big time in taxes. Don't wait till the last second like I know you do with your Christmas shopping because by then it's going to be too late. You see, many of the moves that I'm going to be talking about right now require somebody else's help. You may have the motivation and the desire, but if you're like me and you get things delivered, you know what's happening. It's taking much longer to get things dropped off at your house or to even go get them. They're not even in the store because right now there's something called inflation and it's being driven by short supply. And we're seeing it all across the country. And so if you want to get something done in time, get on it now. Because everything is taking so much longer. So today we're talking about smart money moves to pay less taxes next April 15th. Here's what you can do. Start writing these down. Here we go. Check your withholdings. I see this all the time. If you received a pretty big tax bill last year, In other words, you owed more than $5,000 than what was estimated. Chances are you're not withholding enough. So our CPAs here in our office, we can run an estimator for you before next year's taxes to see if you're withholding enough and to change that now so the next few paychecks that you have coming your way can take care of that problem or help take care of that problem. Get ahead of that now. I'll let you know how to do that in a minute. Pay your 2022 bills right now. If you plan to itemize your tax return next April 15th, well, right now you could prepay some of those deductible expenses that you know are going to come next year. Like what? Well, your mortgage payments, state taxes, medical bills, tuition. You heard me right, tuition. If you have a college student, like I do, Under the American Opportunity Tax Credit, you can get up to $2,500 per student. You heard me right. $2,500, not bad. Contribute the maximum amount to your 401k. I can't say this enough. It's probably the easiest and smartest thing you can do right now. Again, you have weeks to get this done. If you are under 50, you can put away $19,500. And if you're over 50, you can put away 26 grand. And according to the latest data from the IRS, millions of Americans are still not contributing to a retirement plan. So if you're not on track to maximize your plan, well, now is the time to call your benefits coordinator on Monday and tell them you want to max out those plans with any bonuses that are coming your way or your last paycheck. Because once 2021 is over, it's too late. And if you do this, your contribution will go into the 401k before taxes, and then those funds will not be taxable as part of your 2021 federal tax return next April. It's that simple. The more you put in, the less in taxes you're going to pay next year. So remember those numbers, write those down. Under 50, 19.5, 50 or over, 26 grand. The other thing you can do before the year is over is take advantage of your HSA. Now, I bet your health insurance plan has an HSA option, health savings account. Many of our clients didn't even know they had it until they sat down with us. And then we get on the phone with their benefits people and we find out, yeah, you have one of those. So Monday, call your health benefits coordinator and ask, do I have an HSA? And if you do, contribute to that now before the year is over. Here's why. This HSA account is one of my favorite, you heard me right, it's one of my favorite tax-free ways to grow money. It's a triple threat if you think about it. Here's why. If you're an individual, you can put away $3,650 this year. If you have a family, you can put away $7,300 this year. 
And if you're over 55, add another 1,000 on top of those numbers. So think about that. I put away $8,300. It goes into my HSA plan tax-free. I invest it, and then it grows and compounds. Read Albert Einstein's theory of E equals MC squared. Tax-free! Yeah, it's like a nuclear bomb going off. You add those three things together and you get some big results over time. Now here's where it gets interesting. If you're 65 years or older, eligible for Medicare, you can't do this. So for all of you right now under 65, do this, okay? Do it and then best... When you need it, it comes out tax-free to pay for your health care expenses when you're going to need them because we're all going to need to pay some kind of health care later. Do it! Do it now! It is that simple. Now, if you have an HSA and you're, you're one of those people like Rick who was taking it out and using it to pay your deductibles or your medical bills every year, no, 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 don't do that. You're not helping yourself because you're not getting that compounding feature going. If you're doing that, you have other problems we should need to talk about. That's why you want to talk to my CPA here. So that's my next one. Talk to a CPA before the end of the year. If last year's tax return surprised you or you got a letter back in the mail saying you didn't pay enough or anything like that happened... And I'm sorry, but your person's probably not doing their job. And so if you haven't done any pre-planning in 21 because your person also told you, well, the IRS hasn't released the tables yet and I can't do it. That's a bunch of nonsense. You can estimate. Now coming up next on Protect Your Assets, it's time for our popular They Say segment where they say you have to pay capital gain taxes on that stock that shot up in value this year, which you're still sitting on, every single time you sell it. Is that true? Find out the surprising answer next. There's so much more to come. It always pays you to keep it tuned right here. You're listening to Protect Your Assets with David Hollander, the Sandman. That's me. We'll be right back. Now you can hear the show protect your assets hands-free anytime on your smart speaker or Android device. Just say, hey, Google, ask Protect Your Assets to play the latest podcast. Learn more at libertygroupllc.com slash voice. Now back to Protect Your Assets with David Hollander, the Sandman. Welcome back. I'm David Hollander, also known as the Sandman, and you're listening to Protect Your Assets this morning. The financial and investing world can be so complex, so intimidating, so much so that people become frozen. Particularly right now when markets are at all-time highs, you just sit around thinking, hmm, everything's great. Well, the good news is you don't have to get whacked like everybody else. Just get educated. And that's why today I'm sharing some smart money tax moves you can make before the year is over. And it's too late. Pay less next April 15th just by getting educated today. All right. So now it's time for one of our fan favorite parts of the show, our They Say segment, where we debunk common myths, half-truths, and sometimes just bad advice that they say. What do they know that I don't? And what are they saying this week? There's only one man with all the answers. And here he is, David Hollander, the Sandman. So here's one they say. They say that when you always sell that stock, you know, the one that's gone up in value so much this year, 
that you have to pay capital gain taxes on. And as a result, you don't do it. Is that true every single time? No, it's not. In fact, you don't have to pay taxes if you do it correctly. Yeah, the capital gain tax rate has not changed. It's still the same as passed in 2018. And it's good. So if you want to pay zero, here's how you do it. Because zero is my hero. If you have the ability as a single individual filer to show 40500 or less, or as a married couple filing jointly showing $81,000 or less, then guess what? You will pay no capital gain tax on that stock if you've held it for at least one year and you sell it. So if that's the case for you or you're just not sure and you have the ability to push income into 2022, then it might make sense to sell some winning investments tax-free right now and then reinvest back into your favorite company. Now, this is really interesting. You don't have to wait the 30 days to do it either. So it's kind of like this. You're at the gas station right now. You just filled up your tank. You hit that reset button and the numbers drop down to zero, 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 right? You reset the odometer. That's what I just taught you how to do on your stock. You effectively just reset your cost basis. And that reminds me, the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, well, they're all at record highs, even still, even after this past week, it went down a little bit, but they've all risen substantially. And you're looking at some pretty beefy, healthy portfolios right now. And yes, most, many have experienced these types of gains this year. And so if you have sold stock this year or you own mutual funds who may have sold or could sell some things this year and declare gains, then you might be ending up paying more taxes than you think. Because most taxpayers we find are going to pay between 15% and 23.8% federal long-term capital gain taxes because they haven't thought about this until it's too late. Now, don't forget about California because California state income taxes are in addition to those federal rates I just talked about. So you could very easily find yourself paying 30% or more if you sold a stock or exercised that RSU less than one year. Because short-term capital gain tax rates apply, and for most taxpayers that we see, that translates into ordinary income taxes which, by the way, are usually higher than long-term capital gain taxes. Now, this all came up this past week because Bob called us. Now, you see what our tax people do here in conjunction with our financial advisors, which I have actually never seen before, is they talk to each other. And they can model what happens if you exercise the options now. So imagine this. Before you even do something you know what the tax implication is going to be before you do it. You can see it. You can actually make some decisions on your options using our team. Well, if you know what you're about to step into, do you think you might have a better result? You hope so, right? How many of you right now have stock options out there? Raise your hand. Hmm? I see you. All right. Well, if that's you, has anybody ran for you an analysis to show you if you exercise those options or if you've already have exercised maybe this year, what's it going to mean to your taxes next April 15th? No, of course not. It's not the way it works. It's time for a quick break. But when I come back, find out how you can avoid, you're going to love this, having to claim 
your RMD on your tax return. You heard me right. This is probably the most common mistake that most people make and they pay for it later. So find out how to stop that. We'll be right back. Now you can hear the show, protect your assets hands-free anytime on your smart speaker or Android device. Just say, hey, Google, ask Protect Your Assets to play the latest podcast. Learn more at libertygroupllc.com slash voice. Now back to Protect Your Assets with David Hollander, the Sandman. Welcome back. I'm David Hollander, also known as the Sandman. And you're listening to Protect Your Assets. And this morning, you probably tuned into, well, one of the most important shows when it comes to protecting your financial life. While some other shows are busy talking about the annuity of the week or maybe an expensive collection of mutual funds, we help you explore the most important financial and related questions that you want answered. And I know this because you communicate with me. Thank you. If you're just joining us on today's episode of Protect Your Assets, we've been talking about last-minute tax moves you can make with your portfolio before the year is up, before it's April 15th. If you've missed any of this show, I've given you a handful of ideas that you can take on Monday to put more money back in your pocket. It's that simple. So check out the podcast on your favorite podcast software. I use Spotify. Some use Apple Tunes, whatever. Go to the search, type in protect your assets, and then listen and learn. Share it with a friend. Happy birthdays. Jay Morgan and Dan Rullis. Hope you guys have fantastic birthdays. So if you're, speaking of a birthday, if you're turning 72 this year, you're 72 or older, then last year you know that you didn't have to take your required minimum distribution out of your IRA. Well, this year you do. Hate to be the bearer of bad news, but yep, it's coming this year. And if you do it wrong, you could pay up to a 50% penalty. And when you take money out of your IRA, it's taxable. And that withdrawal adds to your ordinary income, which inflates the amount you pay on all of your adjusted gross income, all of your taxable income. If you go ahead and then give that to a charity, the charitable gift reduces your taxable income. But this is the big one that most people don't tell you, but it doesn't reduce your adjusted gross income. It still counts. So I'm going to ask you a question. Do you need that RMD? Most of our clients say no. We don't really need it, but we have to take it. Well, if you don't need it, then let me ask you a question. Why would you pay taxes on it? Well, you say, oh, I give it to charity. I don't pay taxes. Yes, you do, because I just said it increases your AGI, so you're actually paying more taxes. So if you're going to give it to a nonprofit and you want to actually pay less in taxes, there's a better way to do it. It's called a QCD. QCD. You can give up to a hundred grand from your IRA when you're 72 or older, and it won't count towards your AGI. Qualified Charitable Distribution, QCD, write it down. Giving the QCD directly from your IRA to the charity can allow you to benefit from charitable giving even if you don't normally itemize your deductions. Normally, when you do it the other way, you get a 50% off your AGI. But if you give it directly using a QCD, even if the gift amount would otherwise be greater than 50% of your AGI, guess what? The whole hundred is deductible. Doesn't count. Sorry, not deductible. It doesn't count. Doesn't count to your income. 
Well, that'll help a lot because think about your RMDs in the future. They're just going to get what? Bigger. As you get older, you have to take more out. So the QCD could be a very effective strategy to do a couple of things you're trying to do, which is pay less taxes and give some money to some things you care about and see the immediate benefit of that. Get some cool tickets. To fully count as a QCD, there's three factors that you have to think. Write about these down right now. Here we go. A QCD must come from a traditional IRA. A QCD cannot be made from an employer-sponsored retirement account, like your 401k, your SEP IRA. Nope. So you still have time to convert that now before the end of the year and still take advantage of the QCD. That's why I'm telling you this today. because You don't have that much time left, and it's going to take some time to make this happen. Second, the distribution must transfer directly to a qualified charity. Write that down, qualified charity. These are 501c3 organizations. It does not include a donor advised fund, so don't be a dummy and make that mistake. And third, you must receive a confirmation letter from the charity. The letter must include the statement that quote, no goods or services were received in exchange for the gift, period, end quote. Remember, if you do this correctly, the RMD will not count as part of your adjusted gross income. I'd like to give a big thanks to the Protect Your Assets team this morning for putting together another great show. My executive producer and network manager, Kevin Renfer. And of course, all my fabulous producers back there doing all the heavy, hard work. Brett, Felicia, Sean, thank you guys. Because without my team, I'm just another pretty voice on the radio. You've been listening to the Protect Your Assets show. I am David Hollander, the Sandman. Go out and make the rest of your life the best of your life. All calls have been screened. Callers should not expect their conversations with David Hollander on the radio or with staff to be held in confidence. And that legal information provided on the air is not intended to be a substitute for callers hiring their own lawyers to advise them about personal legal matters. Proper advice depends on complete analysis of all the facts and circumstances. The information given on this program is in the nature of general financial comment and cannot be relied upon as pertaining to your specific financial situation. California Life Agent number 0B48569. Listeners should consult their own financial advisor or conduct their own due diligence before making any financial decisions. The preceding program was paid for by Liberty Group, LLC. And the views and the opinions of the host do not represent those of the station or its ownership. You're listening to the Protect Your Assets Radio Network.